Swear or affirm that the testimony you shall give in this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you out. Yes. You can put your hand down. Please state your true and correct name for the record. Cynthia Marie Tate. And can you spell that? C Y N T H I A M A R I E T A T E. Um, and Ms. Tate, what, what kind of work do you do? Um, my profession, I'm medical billing and coding. Right now, I'm working in a restaurant. Uh, do you know a person by the name of Tessa uh, Clendenning? Tessa Daniel. Yes. And how do you know Miss Daniel? I'm um, through an associate at work. And who is that associate? Um, Regina Banks. And do you know the relationship between Regina Banks and Tessa Daniel? Yes. And what was that relationship? Tessa is Regina's daughter. Um, and you said that they were associates at work? Yes. Did the three of you work together or just you and Miss Banks? Uh, the three of us had worked together. And when did you work together? In 2014. And where was it that you worked? It was at Hateville Medical Clinic. And what kind of work were you doing there? Um, office manager. Um, what was Ms. Banks, what kind of work was Ms. Banks doing? She would do check-in and check-out. And how about, uh, I'm sorry? She would just check patients in and out. And how about um, Tessa Daniel? She helped with um, specimen collections for drug testing. Um, and how would you describe um, your relationship with these two individuals? We were just associates. Did you ever uh, socialize outside of, outside of the office? No. Do you know, um, did you know someone by the name of Layla Daniel? Yes. And how did you know Layla Daniel? Um, she was with me and my daughter from July 20th of 2014 until around May of 2015. Okay. And I want to show you what's been previously marked as State's Exhibit 100, which I've shown to Defense Council, do you recognize State's Exhibit 100? Uh, it's a picture that I saw on Facebook, yes. Okay. And does that fairly and accurately represent uh, the person that you referenced as Layla Daniel? Yes. Your Honor, at this time I'd move to admit State's Exhibit 100 into evidence. Admitted. State's 100. This is the state's 100 that we're looking at on the screen. That that's Tessa, correct? I mean, I'm sorry, that was Layla, correct? Yes. All right. Um, now you mentioned that Layla um, lived with you. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit more about how that came to be? We were asked if we could babysit while Tessa was at work, and we ended up having her for two weeks. And then when Tessa came back two weeks two weeks after we had had her. She took her for less than 24 hours, and Regina had asked me to come and pick her back up. And shortly thereafter, I was made the safety resource through DFACS. Okay, we're going to unpack that just a little bit, okay? I want to go back to the very beginning when she first came in and to live with you. Mm -hmm. um, who asked you to, um, if, if, if you could watch her? Regina. Okay. Um, and where were, do you know where uh, Regina or Tessa were going to be? Um, Regina was working. And Tessa was working, and then she wasn't. Okay. And were you watching her during the day or at nighttime? I was there at night at home. Um, and you mentioned initially you watched her for how long? Uh, she was with us for, the, for two weeks initially. And how long was she supposed to stay with you uh, initially? It was just supposed to be while we were working. Uh, you mentioned that, um, was it Tessa that came back um, after that two-week period? Yes. Um, and uh, you, how long did Tessa keep her before um, keep her once she came back? About 24 hours. And you mentioned that um, that Layla was then back in your custody. Yes, sir. All right. Um, who brought her back? I went and picked her up from Regina's house in Hampton. Okay. Um, and do you, was was Tessa there when you picked her up? No. Um, did you know how long that you would be watching uh, Layla at that point? No, not at that time. Um, was it supposed to be open ended, or was did they had they given you some kind of definitive, definitive date? It was just open ended. Why did you agree to uh, watch Layla um, for them? So she wouldn't keep getting bounced 
around to different places. Tell me a little bit about um, the people who lived in your home. It was my daughter and me, and her boy. my daughter's boyfriend was there off and on. And who is your daughter? Tiffany Chapman, or it's now Tiffany Shaw. And um, were there any children that also lived in the house? Yes, my grandson, Lucas. And how old uh, was your grandson, Lucas? Um, they, uh, him and Layla are the same age. He was, he was, right, he was getting ready to turn one. Okay. Are you familiar, um, with the, or familiar with the child by the name of Millie Place? Yes. Um, and who is that person? That is Layla's oldest sister. And how, um, I should ask you, did Millie ever uh, come and live with you as well? Yeah, she, we had her for about two weeks. Was that um, at the same time that Layla began living with you or some other time? That was later. So when Layla first began living with you, do you know where Millie was residing? To my understanding, she was with her grand, her great grandmother, Peggy Banks. Did um, Millie ever uh, come over and visit while Layla was living with you? No. Did uh, you ever take uh, Layla over to where Millie was staying? Once. Um, did either um, her mother, um, Tessa, or her, her grandmother uh, come and visit um, Layla while she was living with you? The grandmother came once, and then Tessa came a little later and stayed for a few days. Okay. Now, at this point, um, was um, defects involved at all um, in, in Layla's life? Yes. And can you tell me how they became uh, involved in Layla's life? You know, I'm really not sure. I got a call from them one day, asked them if they could come do a home visit. Okay. Prior to that, was, were you receiving any assistance to watch Layla? No. Um, were the, um, and when I mean assistance, I mean from, from the government? No. Uh, were, the, were her mother or, her, or any of her family providing any financial assistance uh, for you to watch her? No, sir. Uh, so you said that you got a call from DFAX and they wanted to come do a home visit. Did they actually come and do that? Yes, they did. Um, and did uh, Layla remain in your care after that? Yes, sir. About how long did Layla remain in your care after that? Until about May of 2015. Um, when you, you mentioned that Tessa also lived with you for a short period of time, correct? Yes. And do you recall about when that was during this period? That was right at the end of me having Layla. Um, we had went to court and the judge stated that if Tessa was gonna be in the home that I could not have Tessa and Layla in the same household. I was trying to get Tessa into a, a living sober program. Okay. Um, and I, I can't remember if I asked you this or not. Um, do you recall about what month and year that Layla began living with you? It was in July, it was July 20th of 2015. It was three days before my grandson's first birthday. And are you certain it was 2015? No, it's 2014. Sorry. That's okay. Um, the, um, so Tessa, you said, lived with you towards the end of that period, correct? Yeah, she was there for about a, less than a week. And then you um, had to go to court? Yes. Um, was After DFAX came out and did the home, home visit, um, were you made any sort of designation um, for Layla? They had, I was named the safety resource. And did they explain to you what that meant? That she was just in, I was the safety resource for her, for her, I was her safe haven. Um, and did she continue to live with you? Yes. Right. At that point, did, did the state uh, contribute anything towards her, her care? No, sir. Tell me about how um, um, Millie, uh, tell me about, the, excuse me, Layla, the last time that, uh, or the last day that Layla was, was living with you. How did she come to, to move out? When we went to court, um, they, were, they were supposed to be taking her back into state, taking her into state custody for the first time to place her in foster care. So up until that time, she actually had never been in the foster care system, is that correct? correct? Um, and did you, were you considered to be a foster parent? No. All right. And did you, at that point, did you want to be a, uh, continue to be a foster parent? And no, not at that point. And why was that? Um, DFAS was very intrusive. Okay. Um, and so, um, 
did you go to court that day? Yes, sir. And do you know where uh, Layla went after that, that particular day? She was supposed to be going with an aunt of, the, of Layla's father. I don't remember her name. I want to ask you a little bit more about while uh, Layla was living with you. Mm -hmm. um, did Layla ever have any medical issues? No, sir. Um, was she um, walking? Yes. Um, how well was she walking? She was walking very well. Um, and about how old was she when she came to live with you? She had just turned a year old. She was a year and two days. Um, did her walking get better as she lived with you? Oh, yes. Um, did you, um, are you the one who uh, cared for her? I would care for her when I got home from work. My daughter was the main caretaker during the day. Okay. Um, did you ever bathe Layla? Yes. Um, did you ever change Layla? Yes. I mean, at any point when you were, uh, when she was in your care, did you ever see any signs of physical abuse? No. Did you ever see any bruising? No. I wanted to show you what's been previously admitted as State's Exhibit 45. Um, and if I put it towards the top. Um, if I can orient you to here, is that something, is this uh, portion of her body something that you were familiar with? No, sir. Okay. So have you ever seen that, that, that area of, of discoloration on her skin? No, sir. At any point during the time she lived with you? No, sir. When you first uh, got Layla, were you also, when she first came to live with you, were you also the person who uh, would bathe her or change her? Yes, sir. Um, at that point, did you ever notice any signs of abuse when she first came, started coming to live with you? No, sir. Now, um, did, you, did you ever see, um, did you ever help change or bathe Millie? Yes. Um, and on those occasions when you helped change or bathe <coughs> Millie, did you ever see any signs of uh, physical abuse with uh, Millie? No, sir. Did you ever observe any injuries to Millie? No, sir. And after, um, after Layla left your home, did you ever have any other contact with her um, after she left your home? No, sir. Uh, Ma'am, do you know um, Jennifer Rosenbaum? No. Do you know Joseph Rosenbaum? No. Nothing further this time. Thank you. You talked about Layla's grandmother. Did you mean great grandmother? Great grandmother. Well, grandmother and great grandmother. But the great grandmother was Peggy Banks. Is correct. That correct. And did she ever come to visit Layla at your place? No. Did. You, and I understand you did take Layla to her house. One time, yes, ma'am. Okay. But she never came to see Layla after that one time. No, ma'am. And um, you kept Layla when her mother went to jail as well, correct? Yes. And uh, while you had Layla, did anyone make reports about you to DFACS? I would not know. Did you ever talk to DFACS and talk to them about Peggy having suggested you were drinking? The last time they came out, yes. And you talked to, to them about that um, because Peggy, you, you said, uh, you said the whole family lies and uh, you didn't want to have anything to do with them anymore, correct? I just, I don't remember exact verbiage, but I did say I did not want to have anything else to do with the family, yes. Um, you remember stating that you are tired of dealing with the whole family and at this point will keep Layla in the home until another placement is found. Correct. Do you recall stating uh, that Peggy, the maternal great-grandmother, is the person behind making false claims that I'm drinking and had a man in the home? I don't recall. You don't recall whether you said that or not? No, ma'am. Would it help you to refresh your recollection? We can try. Yeah, I probably did say that. And did you say that the grandmother, Peggy Banks, 
lies. Um, yes. Because that was, in fact, the truth. She no. lies. Yeah, because that, I mean... That wasn't true, what she told the defense. No, it was not. Did she ever call and inquire about Layla? No. Um, when isn't it true that the only time she wanted Layla was when she needed a babysitter for Millie? She never wanted Layla. She never wanted Layla? No. And do you know why that is? No. Now, um, there came a time you had Millie and Layla together. Yes. And there came a time when you could no longer care for Millie because of her behavior problems, right? Yes. And you took her to Peggy Banks? I think Peggy came and picked her up. Came and picked her up? Yeah, because Millie only wanted to be with Peggy. She was, did not want to be with anyone but Peggy. Okay. And um, at some point you couldn't keep Layla anymore, could you? I mean, you, you, stopped, you stopped having Layla for, at, at some point, correct? Yeah, at the end. At the end. Mm-hmm. When, they when the state took her into state custody, yes. Do you uh, remember telling DeMarcus Blunt, the uh, defects worker, that um, Peggy would visit the children uh, but only kept Millie? No. You don't remember that? No. Now... Layla gets blotches of discolored skin when she has vitamin C, isn't that correct? I never gave her vitamin C, so I would not know. But did you not tell them, defects, that when you give her orange juice, it's, she gets blotches of discolored skin? No. Do you recall talking to Misha Robinson, Robertson on March 15th, 2015? To, and who is she again? Kate, Defects case. Yes. And do you recall telling you telling her that Peggy is a spiteful woman? Yes. show you what's been marked as defendant's exhibit 11. Can you identify Defendant's Exhibit 12? Yes, that is Layla in her Halloween costume. And what year would that be? Um, that would be 2014. Okay. Let me show you uh, Defendant's Exhibit 11 and see if you can recognize that. Yes, that's outside of my home. Okay. And who is in the picture? That would be um, Michelle and Scott Chapman, me, Scott's daughter, Brittany, my daughter, my grandson, Millie, and Layla. Let me tender into evidence, Your Honor, Defendants Exhibit 11 and 12. The objection to 11 and 12. Okay. Ask if I may publish, Your Honor. meant by Layla's Halloween costume? Yes. Is that Layla in, in uh, her aunt's hands or her? That's her aunt, yes. Her aunt's hands. And is 
that a pic is that the picture of your family? Yes. With Layla and Lily. Yes. Thank you. I have no further questions. Uh, safe to say you didn't have the highest opinion of Ms. Banks, is that correct? Correct. All right. The, um, the defense counsel asked you about um, vitamin C and if she would break out in a rash. So I just want to show you some photos, okay? Mm -hmm. Did you ever observe anything like this on Layla when you saw her? No. So if she had uh, orange juice, she didn't look like that? No, sir. States 52. When Layla, if Layla had vitamin C, did you ever see anything like that? No, sir. I object to this line of questioning. She testified she did not give her vitamin C, so she does not know uh, what it would look like. So comparing it to some other picture is not, it is, is immaterial, it's irrelevant, and it's not subject to, uh, it's, it's not. Thank you. Judge, I'm, uh, they opened the door as to, I'm just testing to see whether she saw anything consistent with some sort of rash that the defense seems to insinuate that Layla had. There was a question that you asked that seemed to suggest that perhaps the witness had given the child vitamin C and you were probing her knowledge of whether or not there was discoloration related there to And so for that reason, I'm going to allow this line of question. Showing the state seven years. Closer up on the back. I just apologize to have to do this to you. Did you see anything like that on Layla? No, sir. Is there any objection to this witness being excused? Not in the state. All right, thank you, ma'am. The state will call its next witness. The state calls Tiffany Shaw. Tiffany Shaw. Right up here, please. testimony you shall give in this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. I do. Put your hand down. Please state your true and correct name for the record. It's Tiffany Shaw. Um, and can you just spell it for us? T-I-F-F-A-N-Y-S-H-A-W. Okay. And ma'am, what kind of work do you do? I'm a customer service representative. Okay. Um, I want to um, ask you um, about a couple people, okay? Mm -hmm. um, are you familiar with um, a, well, first of all, who's your mother? Cynthia Tate. 
Um, and are you familiar with the person named uh, Tessa Daniel, who used to be known as Tessa Clendenning? I am. And how did you know Tessa? Um, I had met her. Our moms worked together, so I met her there. When she was were actually also working there at the time when I met her. Okay. Did you know a person by the name of Layla Daniel? I did. And how did you know Layla? Uh, we cared for her for quite some time. You asked her to speak up. We cared for her for quite a while. Okay. Uh, can you tell us just a little bit about how she came to live with you? Um, her grandmother, Gina Banks, had asked my mom, Cindy, if I might be able to watch her for a couple of days um, to give her a break because Tessa wasn't there at the time. And um, my mom agreed. And... We, had, we ended up having her for about two weeks um, before they came to pick her up. Um, and then she was only gone for about 24 hours. And then Gina called and asked my mom if we would be willing to come pick her back up um, because Tessa had left and she didn't know when she was coming back. So did Layla come to live with you? At that point, yeah. She, we got her a crib, and she came to live with us. Okay. And again, your, your voice kind of trails off a little bit, so if you could... We got her... That, that was when we went ahead and got a, a crib for her and started making a room for her. Okay. Um, who else lived in the home? Uh, it was me and my mother. Um, any children in the home? My son, Lucas. Okay. And how old was Lucas? He is... He was a year old at the time. He, we, when we first got Layla, he was actually getting ready to turn a year old three days later. I'm going to show you what's been marked as State's Exhibit 102. For identification purposes, it's previously been shown to defense. Do you recognize State's 102? Just say yes out loud. Yes. Okay. What do you recognize it to be? Uh, that's my couch. <laughs> um, my son sitting on the couch with Layla. Um, and is this a photograph that you took? It is. And have there been any modifications, alterations, or deletions to this photograph? No. You and I moved to Mid States 102. Oh, you may publish. Thank you, Jeff. So who is this group that we are looking at in the photograph? That's Lucas and Layla watching probably Curious George. Okay. <laughs> So um, you mentioned that you care. Tell me a, bit, a little bit about the care arrangements um, while you watched Layla. Um, I wasn't working at the time because my son was still very little. Um, so I cared for Layla w along with him uh, while my mom was at work and also, you know, throughout the night if they woke up or anything like that. And I, you know, I... Uh, tell me, um, how, how was Layla as a, as a, as a one-year-old child? How would you describe her? Happy. Just like any other one-year-old, she was, it, it was like having twins because they were so, they're one-year-olds. They were very similar. Did you ever have any problems with Layla? No. How would you describe her health when she lived with you? Um, perfect. And about, um, about when did she come and live with you? Um, that would have been July of 2014. And altogether, how long did she live with you? Um, she was with us from July until May of the next year. So I guess that's about nine months or so, or maybe a little more. Now, did uh, her biological family ever come over and visit? Um, I remember they came for Thanksgiving, and it was a f there were a few of them then. Do you remember who they were? Um, I believe it was Gina Banks, um, Tessa, Caitlin Daniel. Um, I th that's all I remember. Okay. And so uh, Peggy Banks is in what relation to, I'm sorry, um, Gina Banks is what relation to Layla? She was her maternal grandmother. Um, is that the only time that you can recall that the family came over? Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, did they uh, call, check in on Layla? Um, Gina did. 
and I think Tessa was getting updates from her about Layla. I never really talked to Tessa much. Do you know where Tessa was? No. Um, did Tessa ever come and stay with you? She did for a little while. I want to say less than two weeks. And then we had a meeting with DFAX, and they said that it was inappropriate for her to be in the home with Layla during the case that they had open with DFAX because she could be left unattended with Layla, which is something they didn't want. Um, around what time, around what time frame was Tessa living uh, in the same home? Um, was it towards, let me ask this, was it towards the beginning of when Layla was there or towards the end? Kind of in the middle, I believe. The timeline is a little, it's been a while, so. It's been a while. Yeah. Um, when did DFAX, to your recollection, when did DFAX first um, become involved? We had had her for a couple of months already before DFAX was even aware of her whereabouts, as far as I know. Um, and that's when they found us and started wanting to do the home visits and all of that. And did you all do those home visits? Yeah. We complied with everything they asked. Um, ultimately, did you all have an interest in continuing as, as foster parents for Layla? We did, um, up to a point. Okay. Um, and then at, at that point, you no longer... Um, Tell me what happened. We became extremely uncomfortable with the amount of home visits and um, phone calls we were getting, and they wanted us to repeat drug screens and, home, you know, do the evaluation of the home again, and which them, the home visits we were fine with, but they were also wanting to view my son as well as Layla. Um, when you, what do you say, what do you mean by you, they wanted to view your son? Um, they would make me take his diaper off as well and show him undressed to show that the kids weren't being abused, is what we were told. And uh, how did that make you feel? Extremely uncomfortable because I had never been under investigation by child services, so. And when we say under investigation, were you under investigation no, at that point? No, but it, it felt like it. I want to talk a little bit about uh, Layla. You mentioned that Layla was, was healthy when she lived with you, correct? Mm -hmm. um, how was she mobile? Was she able to walk around? Yeah, she was walking. Um, I want to show you states 101, 103, and 104. You recognize states 101, 103, and 104. Yes. And what do you recommend? Um, these are pictures also taken in my home of Layla as well as myself in the background and um, Millie and my son. And um, are those photographs that you took? Yes, they are. Um, have there been any modifications to these photographs? No. You and I move to admit states 101, 103, and 104. Perfect. Uh, 101. I was playing with her, Lucas in the pool. And who's who is it that we see in the for, in the forefront there? Wait, look. <laughs> what are we looking at? It's one of one of three. Let me zoom out. Um, it looks like they were eating lunch. And can you help us? Can you help identify the people who are in the photograph? Um, Layla's in the high chair. My son is, and Millie are sitting at the table. So Millie is Millie. Did Millie come over at times? Um, we actually ended up having Millie for a little while when she was in between other placements. About how long did you, were, were, did you have Millie? I think we only had Millie for. I think I want to say it was less than a month that Millie was there. Do you know where she went to after uh, she lived with you? Um, I know she stayed with Scott and Michelle Chapman and also with Peggy Banks. I don't remember which order 
particularly she okay. was moved around. And what are we looking at in stakes 104? That is Millie and Layla together on my couch. That's the photograph that you took? It is. Do you know if this was during the period of time when Millie was living there as well? It is. Um, during the period of time that Millie was living there, did you have um, occasion to change her or bathe her? Uh, Millie? Yes. Um, would help her get a bath, yeah. Did you ever observe on Millie any um, signs of physical abuse that you can think of? No. Um, what about when Layla was living with you? Did you ever uh, change her or bathe her during all those months? Yeah, every day. <laughs> every day. And did you ever see any signs of physical abuse? No. I want to show you what's been previously admitted into evidence of state exhibit 45. Um, this area, you okay? This area right here that I'm pointing to, is that an, is that something that you've you have seen you've seen before? Is that a mark that you've seen before? No, that wasn't there when she was with me. After um, Layla, um, after Layla was no longer uh, living with you, do you know where she went? Um, I think she went to stay with the Browns first after she left us. Did you continue to keep in contact with her? Um, no. Did you keep I in contact with any of her, <laughs> any of her family members um, after that in the months leading up to her her, her death? Only Caitlin, Daniel. Um, <clears throat> Nothing further at this time. No questions. Thank you, ma'am. You can step in. Any objections for this being excused? Nothing safe. Okay. And you're free to go. State calls next witness. State calls Dr. John Potts. Dr. John Potts. Have you raised your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you shall give this court shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you. If you could um, please state your name for the record. Uh, John Potts. And Dr. Potts, how are you employed? Self-employed in uh, Fayetteville and Petrie, Fayetteville and Hampton now. And how are you employed? A pediatrician. And do you have your own practice? Yes. How long have you held your own practice? Since 1978. And in the, those years from 1978 to today, have you always worked in pediatrics? Yes. And prior to opening um, your own practice in 1978, how were you? I worked from 76 to 78 with uh, Dr. Alan Sievert in East Point. Uh, before that, I was in the uh, U.S. Navy for two years, and then residency before that. And what was your residency in? Uh, pediatrics. Now, in this practice, is it customary to write or document um, every time a child comes in? Yes. And is it customary to document the reasons why a child is coming to see you? Yes. Is it also your practice um, to document any concerns you may have regarding child abuse? Yes. Have you been trained to look for signs of child abuse? Yes. And are you 
mandated reporter? Uh, I think I understand what you mean. <coughs> yes. And what does that mean? I think it means that if I s see abuse, I should report it. I'm obligated legally to report it. Is there ever a time that you've had suspicions or concerns of child abuse as it related to one of your patients? Yes, uh, a number of times. And did you document your concerns in those cases? Yes. And did you report those concerns? Yes. Yes. How many times did you see Layla? She was seen in her office four times. And were those four visits um, documented? Yes. Yes, as an eight-day-old. It was an after-delivery uh, checkup. What is a, a well-child check? It's when you see the child for a scheduled well-child exam as a, in contrasted to a sick visit like with fever. Uh, I can look, but I think I remember seven pounds, 12 ounces. Her birth weight was seven pounds, 10 ounces. And what was her height? I'll have to look. I don't remember that. Okay. Dr. Potts, um, previous to today, you had taken some notes to kind of summarize um, Layla's medical chart? Yes. Would those assist you in um, discussing her medical history today? Uh, yeah, it, yes, it would help. And do you have those with you? Yes. And uh, just to make sure that we are, you did provide a copy of these to the defense. Are these the two, the two summaries that you are using? Yes. Uh, yeah, these are two of the summaries, yes. And these are per... Uh, this is a, just a summary of both of them. This is Layla's. I will mark um, for identification purposes the summary for both children at 106 and the summary for Layla at 107. And looking at your summary, are you able to um, to tell us how tall Layla was at the time? Uh, her, her length was 20 and a half inches. And on July 26th of 2013, did you conduct a full body exam of Layla? Yes. And did you have any concerns with regards to Layla at that time? No. Any suspicions of abuse on that day? No. Uh, from my notes, it appears that the mother did. It said, Mom plans to formula feed. When was the next time that you saw Layla? The, the next visit was 5-16-2014. Uh, almost, almost a year later? Uh, nine months, nine months, roughly. 
visit on May 16th? Uh, she came in because of a rash. And what type of rash did she have? Uh, I did not see her. Somebody in my office saw her, and it it was classical of hand, foot, and mouth disease. And what is hand, foot, and mouth disease? It's a Coxsackie virus that you get little red bumps in a number of places, uh, but primarily the mouth, the hands, the feet, but it can be pretty widely spread at times. And how common is hand, foot, and mouth with children the age of Layla, about one years old? It's very common. You'd catch it from someone else, probably another child. And during that, um, when, a well, when a child comes in with a rash, as mm -hmm. Layla did on May 16, 2014, uh, is it customary for you to observe the child without their clothing? Yes. And according to your records, was that done on May 16, 2014? Um, I did not see her. The, the note was just the vesicles on the palms, the soles, and the mouth. So I, I assume that he did, but I, I did not see her. On that May 16, 2014 note, was um, there any other concerns regarding Layla? Dr. No, and they did not do a, a weight check because uh, they don't usually on sick visits unless they're throwing up or having diarrhea. August 19th, 2014, so it was uh, about eight months later. No, it was no, three, mo uh, three months later, eight, 1914. And what was the purpose of Layla's visit on August 19th, 2014? Uh, she was here for uh, a well checkup uh, and uh, a, a well checkup. She did. Uh, she had been, the only shot she had gotten since birth was the one in the hospital, hepatitis B shot. At our office that day, she got uh, about five shots. When Layla came to your practice on August 19, 2014, was there anything um, noted of concern? The exam was totally normal, and again, Ron Thompson saw her then, except there was a, a small red nodule on the right labial area that he thought might be either chronic infection or something called a hemangioma. Uh, he did not feel like it needed to be treated. Uh, he referred her to a dermatologist. What is a hemangioma? It's a collection of blood vessels. We use terms like strawberry birthmark, things of that nature. It doesn't have to be there at birth. Uh, usually, though, within the first year of life, it appears. So you, a child can be born without one, and then yeah. Get one. And it, do, do the um, mangiomas disappear at all, or resolve themselves? Uh, the vast majority of them uh, disappear on their own, and sometimes pretty quickly. No, no. Uh, there was n no uh, indication of bruising, and but uh, again, he he said it might be a hemangioma. So. He, the, the was um, Layla's blood or hemoglobin tested on August 19 of 2014? Yes, and it was normal. It was 11.6. And is it customary to test a child's blood? In our practice, we check it at nine months and then at two and yearly after that. Uh, she apparently, from what we could tell, did not have a nine-month well checkup, so we, that's why we did it at the 13-month checkup. If a child had a low hemoglobin result, um, what would that mean? Uh, it could mean uh, that they were not taking in enough iron in their diet or they were not absorbing it normally. Usually they're not taking in enough iron. And it's not real uncommon. And on the August 19, 2014 visits, was there any concern um, regarding child abuse? 
no, none whatsoever. What is the fourth and final date that you saw? The fourth and final visit was uh, April the 30th, 2015. And that was for a 21 month well checkup, which is, we normally do it at 18 and 24 months, but she came in a little bit late. Uh, the exam was normal except for a runny nose. Uh, she had been seen by a pediatrician or a physician somewhere else and been put on Amoxil. Uh, I can, told her to finish the Amoxil and I added Claritin and five days of something called Orpred. And that was the last time that we saw her, but the, the exam was normal. And during that visit, did you um, check Layla from head to toe? Yes. No, no, not at, not at all. Now, on May 11 of 2015, were Layla's records um, sent to Eagle Landing, Eagles Landing? Yes. Mm -hmm. Who made that request? Uh, the uh, legal guardians, whoever that was. Now, one, one, uh, on the uh, August 19th visit, uh, we had a note that she was staying at that time with guardians. Did Layla have less than the recommended well checks? Yes, uh -huh. unless she was getting them somewhere that we were not aware of. So it's possible she was getting them somewhere else. Yeah, but uh, it seemed to be clear that she, would not get, she was not getting shots which would be the main reason to get the well checkup. So she probably was not getting the, shot, the checkups. On, as of April 30th, 2015, hmm. um, well, actually, let me ask you something else. Did you, were you able to um, document when Layla, when Layla got her shots? Uh, yeah, the, the, our records showed she got one at two days of age, which had to be in the hospital, and then she got, uh, may I look at the records? Uh, she got several from us on that August 19th, 2014 visit. Uh, they left our practice uh, around the first day of May. She got... Uh, one, two, three. She got five shots uh, on the 18th of May of that year, and then she got three shots uh, on the 29th of June of that year. Somewhere else. And how is it that you were able to have a document in your file from June 29th? They're supposed to put all shots uh, from any office or health department in uh, something called GRITS, uh, which is a, a registers all the shots given to anybody in the state of Georgia. And that's something that you as a doctor have access to? Yes. Uh -huh. um, as of November 2015, would Layla have been current on her shots? Um, see, that would make her, um, it'd make her, what, two years and three months? Uh, one, two, three. Uh, it appears to, I'd have to, it appears to, yeah. No. Uh -huh. Now, do you actually have an independent memory of Layla visiting the office? Not honestly. Uh -huh. So there's nothing about Layla's visits that stood out in your memory? No. So they're pretty standard? Yes. And doctor, do you have um, your notes 
notes for on Millie as well. Yes, uh-huh. Would you like to use those when talking about her history with your office? Uh, I can use them partly, at least. You can use them what? I can use them some and not use them some, uh -huh. depending on the question. We saw Millie 22 times. Uh, some of those may have just been for vaccinations that the provider actually didn't see her. And how many times did you see Millie in 2012? One, two, three. Seven times. And what were the dates that you saw Millie in okay. 2012? Uh, one, six, uh, 12, two, 14, 12. Three, one, twelve, five, fourteen, twelve, seven, ten, twelve, ten, nine, twelve, twelve, nineteen, twelve. In Millie's records for the year twenty twelve, was there any concerns of child abuse? No. Uh, and during Millie's twenty twelve visits, would she have been checked from head to toe? Yes. Uh, one, two, three, uh, three times. And what were those dates? Uh, one, ten, thirteen, three, seven, thirteen, and nine, eleven, thirteen. And in 2013, was there any concern um, for child abuse noted in Millie's charts? No. Uh -uh. And would Millie have been checked head to toe? Yes. How many times did you see Millie in 2014? Uh, just one time. 6, 3, 14. And why did you see her on 6, 3, 14? Uh, in my summary, she had vomiting and diarrhea. I can pull up the actual visit if you want. That's okay. Um, let me ask you this. Was there any concern on that visit for um, child abuse? No. Now, in 2015, how many times did you have Uh, two times. And what were those dates? Four, four, fifteen, and four, thirty, fifteen. Give me those dates again. Oh, four, 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 and four, thirty. And on those visits, was Millie checked head to toe? Uh, four, four, she was given a shot by the nurse, so no. Uh, 4.30, uh, she was in for a sick visit, so probably we didn't, she didn't take her uh, panties off, but we did, I did check from the waist up. Uh, she was there for a cough and a runny nose. And on May 11, 2015, did you transfer Millie's records? Yes. I assume so. In 2016, though, you saw Millie how many times? Four times. And what were those dates? Uh, 7, 7, 10, 17, 12, 8, and 12, 14. And were, on those dates, was there any concern for child abuse? No. Uh, I believe it was five times. And you have those dates as well? Uh, one twenty nine, uh, three twenty seven, five one, seven five, eleven nine, and eleven twenty seven. Did I count wrong? No, yeah, no, I, I, one, two, three, four, uh, five times, yeah, but I, there wasn't a 129. That was five times. 
Yes. And what was the purpose of Millie's November 9, 2017, 2017 visit? November the 9th, uh, a swollen ankle. The, the, the provider, who was not me, felt like it was a mildly sprained ankle. She was seen uh, 18 days later, 17 days later, and uh, the, the ankle sprain was gone, ankle swelling. Why was she seen uh, 17 to 18 days later? Uh, for a, a cough and runny nose and fever. Let me pull. Let me pull that up. It just said Millie presents with ankle swelling, right ankle. Again, the day before the precipitating event appears to have been running although the actual mechanism of injury was unknown. Uh, this is the third time within the past month that she has done this to the same ankle uh, on, the, on the playground. And they just treated with uh, uh, just rest and ice and uh, ibuprofen. No, no. Is there anything about Millie's visits that stood out in your memory? Uh, any of the visits? No, she was sent at, at uh, four months of age. She had two small impetigenous lesions on her shoulder uh, that was treated with uh, topical antibiotic ointment. And she had a mild bacterial infection uh, that was resolving uh, at seven months and at, I believe, 15 months. That was treated with an oral antibiotic. But no, n no evidence that we saw of child abuse. You, mean, you said there was something on her shoulder. What, what exactly? Uh, Infotigo is a superficial bacterial infection that's common in children, uh, particularly in the summertime. And does it go away with treatment? Uh, it's always best to treat it. Sometimes it'll go away just with good hygiene. And you also noted that she came in with, a couple times with a mild bacterial infection. Yeah, that was when she was seven months and when she was 15 months. Is that something that you would see um, on her skin? Or? Yeah, it, it, it was a little vesicular, a little bumpy thing. Uh, and is that a common infection? Uh, yeah, it's, it, you see it. It's not uncommon. And how is that treated? Uh, usually with either topical or oral antibiotic or, or both. Now, between July 24 of 2015 and November 17 of 2015, <coughs> Did you ever see uh, Millie place in your uh, Ask the question again, the times. The, the day range I'm asking about is July 24, 2015, to November 17, 2015. No, uh, we saw her 4 30, 15, and the next time we saw her was uh, July of 16. July of 2016. 2016, yeah. Uh, you mean Millie or Layla? Layla. Layla. The last time we saw her uh, was 4.30, 15.
some rashes um, or infections that the girls had. And I'll show you what's previously been marked as States Exhibit 70. Those rashes you were describing, does this appear like those rashes? So if you look behind you, you'll see it on. Okay. No, it didn't. What we saw does not look like any of that. No. No. Yeah, yes, we would have been obligated to. And as to States Exhibit 78, if you saw that injury with no explanation, would you have had to give me a report? Yes. After as to States 45, if you had seen these injuries on a child, would you have made a report? Yes. Yes. Thank you, no further questions. <coughs> Okay. And at that visit, it was not true the child came in for congestion and constipation, correct? Yes. And the mother said that sometimes the child gasps as, she, as if she cannot breathe. Yes. And that was her mother who said that. Yes. And um, I want to turn to December 14th. 2016, and this would be familiar. Okay. You said December 14th? December 14th. 2016, okay. 2016. Mm -hmm. Um... Oh, I'm pretty sure it's the great grandmother, but let me see. If, uh, I 
And the uh, great grandmother. Okay. And the great grandmother brought her in for what reason on that day? She was concerned about her uh, being uh, significantly hyperactive and not able to control her at home. And did she in fact say that she, did you in fact write that she was desperate because child is lying, impulsive, and argumentative? Uh, the main problem she's having currently include fidgeting, inability to stay seated in class, inattentiveness, inability to stay on task, impulsivity, forgetfulness, refusal to do assigned task at home, and argumentative temperament with parents. And other problems include lying. Yes? In fact, you wrote great-grandmother desperate because child is lying. Uh, I said uh, great-grandmother, uh, great-grandmother is desperate. I didn't say, it didn't add to that. But you said she's desperate? Yes. She wasn't desperate for any other reason. She's desperate because her child is lying and argumentative. Because of the behavior, because yes. The behavior. And she told you that she saw this behavior two years ago when she had her, and she's seen it again. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then we'll turn to March 9th, 2018. Who brought her? March 9th of 2. 3-9-2018. I don't think we saw her. We didn't see her in 18 at all. Did she not come in for a swollen ankle? It was the third time in the past month. Uh, not in 18. It was... Uh, it was 11 9 17. 11 9 17? Yes. Uh -huh. Swollen ankle? Yes. Third time within the past month? Yes, that's what they said. We, that's the only time we saw her. And uh, that was, when you say that's what they said, who's they? Let me look back and see. 11 9 17. Let me read it out to you. And actually, I didn't, I wasn't the one that saw it. It says, Millie presents with ankle swelling. It's primarily in the right ankle. Swelling is noted to be mild. It began yesterday. The precipitating event appears to have been running, although the actual mechanism of injury is unknown. This is the third time within the past month that she has done this to the same ankle. Injured initially four weeks ago on the playground. Twisted it, treated with, uh, uh, Rice, RICE, and Motrin, no improvement, keeps re injuring it. Uh, and, and the provider felt like it was a, a mild sprain, uh, treated it with rest and ice elevation, and told her to continue to take uh, an ibuprofen. And then when I saw her, uh, that was the 9th, when I saw her on the 27th, uh, there, was no, there was no swelling of the ankle, no complaints of the ankle. Uh, I, I, I saw that in the report, and, and I don't know if it was actually done or not. So, but uh, the uh, the provider ordered it, yes. Yeah, it, it's Millie, uh, it said some swelling, uh, but I don't see any fracture. But yeah, this was apparently, and this was done uh, November 9th, so it was done the same day. Is that an order for an X-ray? Uh, yes, uh -huh. uh, I'm just I'm just trying to look. Yeah, it's yeah, it is an order for an X-ray. Thank you. Mm -hmm.
Bitte. Yes. And um, who was the child living with at the time these injuries occurred? Uh, I don't know that I know the answer to it. Was it the great grandmother again? I, I'm thinking it was the great grandmother, but I'm not sure. It's not noted on that, is it? And Dr. Potts' children injured themselves all through their childhood. Yes, sir. Um, some children are rougher than others. Absolutely. Some are more rough and tumble. Yes. And uh, some are very adventuresome and pile mm -hmm. chairs on top of beds and try to reach fans and yeah. that sort of thing and fall down, don't they? Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm Yes. And do you see that often with um, young children? Yes. And as to state's exhibit 18, do you consider that consistent with rough and tumble child play? Uh, no. Would you consider that consistent with climbing on some chairs and playing with a plan or something? No, I don't think so. I think it would be more likely uh, some type of abuse, but I couldn't rule it out of every situation. You couldn't rule out that it was uh, from a fall from a, a ladder hitting the rungs as she's going down? I think it would be unlikely, honestly. Okay, but it's possible. It's, it's perhaps possible. Yes, if they were old enough to. Yes.